Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the opportunity of gathering together. Father, release to us the knowledge that we are to have as watchmen in these final hours. We'll be careful to give you the praise for it in the name of Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, thy Son, and our precious Savior. Amen. If we were to pick a topic today, probably that topic would be money changers. For inasmuch as this is the month of April, and we know that May follows, but in this past week, in this past week, there has been two specific programs brought upon the American people in primetime television, starting with, I think it was April the 21st through the 22nd, on separate networks to make sure a complete coverage is, is uh, brought upon the people, that your monies are gone. Six hundred billion dollars uh, owed to third powers that economists stated you might as well write it off. But rather, we will extend the loan until, to, whereby they are not devoided or are done away with, because at that time there would be a domino effect that would stop the world. Now, beloved, this is all very planned, number one. The learned elders have everything under control. There will not be a crash, even though uh, through these national networks of the banks on the brink and this sort of thing, they would lead you to believe that it was very possible. What they wanted our people to believe and accept was the fact that we're all in the same boat. Not only this nation, but all nations of the world, that they must stick together, hang together, and provide an answer to this world economy at this time. This what they call a worldwide recession. Now this money that was loaned to these developing nations was your money. It was our people's money that was, with good faith, uh, placed in the banks of this nation. This is why that our uh, so-called recovery from the recession is not booming, is because the money's not there to boom with. It's in Central America. It's in Canada. This is, this, this is true also of uh, Europe. German marks in Central America. Uh, money from all over Europe, uh, in Poland, in other places, in the billions and billions that they can't even play the interest on and have no way whatsoever of ever hoping to. But you can rest assured that three quarters of the $600 billion that was reaped from this nation or stolen, however you like to say, because you see the American people had been fed this this uh, federal insurance policy on their bank account, it'll never happen again as it did in 29, and truly it won't. But you see, now you don't have to worry. Your government will make all that good. A bank can't go broke. Your government will make that good. But then I have, that's very comforting, isn't it? But who's the government? It's you. You'll make it good. Yes, of course you will. You see. So, you see, the merry-go-round goes round and round. But three-quarters of that money ended up in the coffers of the money changers. And I'm, I think that three-quarters would be extremely conservative. All of it but what went to support the taco program and a few other things that was consumed, more or less, by the peoples that it was sent to, you see. So certainly we see in this the money changers busily at work. The American people have been left at this time with the thought, and they believe it, that it is gone and there's nothing we can do about it. Whatever is decided in the month of May, in the meetings that come up, the American people will accept it because nothing can be done about it. Because, you see, the commentators were quite careful to stress, you are not hurt by this. The nation is not hurt by this. The world is hurt by it. Everyone. Not one particular individual, but the entire world is hurt by it. 
There is no recovery. There is no way. We are in the boat together. But if we hang tight and if we stick together, we can overcome it. This, this, will, this will fade and take a different tune in this month of May. Now, let's go to God's Word and let's find out what He had to say about the exactors, about the oppressors, about the money changers, and as it would relate to the end time. Turn in your Bibles to Zechariah chapter 9. Let's begin reading at verse 8. Chapter 9, Zechariah, verse 8. And I will encamp about mine house because of the army, because of him that passeth by. And because of him that returneth. Now, first of all, to familiarize you real quickly, we're talking about Jerusalem and his house in Jerusalem, the temple. He that returns means the ill, um, whether it be Kenites or even the Antichrist, ultimately return to the city Jerusalem. And no oppressor shall pass through them any more, for now have I seen with my own eyes. In other words, we're coming to a point whereby never again... This word oppressor in the Hebrew is nagas, which is a tax gatherer, a money gatherer, a money changer. Never again will there be a money changer such as the learned elders operating from my city, Zion. Well, now we know that is quite future because certainly there is an exactor working from Zion now. They just pulled off in the past few months the greatest take ever known or dreamed of by man the riches of the world, stolen without one word of complaint, more or less. Stolen when it, even the people's hands are tied, not just one nation, not just one army, not just one people, but extracted from the entire world population from all nations. That's quite a feat. Think of it. It was accomplished before our very eyes, you know how it was done. Through banking, international bankers. And you know that the Kenites have controlled the banks uh, of this world for quite some time now. You know now why it was necessary that they controlled the banking industry. I'm not talking about your little mom and pop bank in some small town. I'm, ta I'm speaking on the large scale now. They're almost driving that type of bank out of business because of high technology and so forth that it is thought of and traded in on an international scale, not a little mom-and-pop bank anymore. It was through this method they were, they were able to extract the riches of the world without one shot being fired. You know what the next verse from this is, though, below this? Let's read it. Verse 9. Rejoice greatly. He says, you rejoice about this. O daughter of Zion, my people, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, you that there of the city. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, and he is just, and having salvation, lowly, and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the fowl of an ass. This was the first advent. Don't you worry about the money changer, because the Lord Jesus Christ is going to enter Jerusalem riding upon an ass. That bringing salvation to the world. He spared you at that time. He instructed you in John the 8th chapter. Learn the truth, and the truth will set you free. I hope that you are not bound in this world monetary system at this time as much as he has warned you how to avoid it. Let the world do as the scriptures proclaim, but you read God's word, you understand it. Now let's read of the second advent. In the next verse, verse 10, And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen. This means to all nations. And his dominion, that is his rule, his kingdom, shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. This is Christ's second advent when he returns on not a lowly, as but a charging white steed, a horse of revelation with power and authority. When he takes 
charge of the money changer. When he said, notice it said he was just. But that means he will justify all things. So let me tell you something. The money changer had better be enjoying his hour. For his hours are running out. Let's continue on. Verse 11. As for thee, he's talking directly to you. Also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. You see, because you partake of the living water now. You're not living from that water of the pit. Who's in the pit? Satan's uh, ilk, his people, his money changers, his type. He says, I've given you the bread of the living water. You have escaped that. Verse 12, turn ye to the stronghold. What is your stronghold? Christ, of course. You prisoners of hope. You have hope, do you not? Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Do you know what a double portion is? That's the rewards of the first fruits, meaning God's elect, meaning you. Hold firm, hold fast, study God's word, understand what is happening in this world. Let us, if we may, go for a moment to the book of Matthew. Let's cover, let's see what he told us in that first advent when he entered Jerusalem, riding upon that lowly eye. Let us see if we can absorb in as much as history has gone on and we have seen and observed these things come to pass. The 21st chapter, if you would, of Matthew. Let's pick it up in verse 5. And this is where Jesus is making his entry into that city, Jerusalem. This prophecy we have just read, the first part of it being fulfilled. I assure you it will not be long until the second part will be fulfilled also. Let's see if Jesus gave us a clue as he rode that animal into the city. Verse 5, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, this means Zion in Hebrew, Behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass and a colt, the fowl of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. In other words, they were simply fulfilling the word of God. That's why you can count to own this word, for it is true. Verse 7, And brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. They placed Christ upon this animal. Verse 8, And a very great multitude, got that? A very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. This was to if you would, more or less, the Feast of Tabernacles. It is written in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 40, if you want to make a note. 9. And the multitudes that went before, and they followed, uh, and that followed, crying, saying, Hosanna! Hosanna means save now in the Hebrew tongue. Save now. But you see, it wasn't time. This was the first ad that they had to take the initiative to be saved at that time. Hosanna to the son of David, giving the covenant bloodline there. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, save now in the highest, uh, in the God, the creator, if you would, of the world. What a beautiful moment this must have been when Christ triumphantly rode into that city in all humbleness and meekness, uh, about to become the sacrifice of all time. And the multitudes crying out, save us now. What did Christ do concerning this? Verse 10, And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all of them that sold and bought in the temple, the money changers and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. You look at Jerusalem again, beloved, for just before the second advent it shall be the same as the first. Their days are numbered. Their time is limited. 
It was for this reason that he threw the money changers out at that first advent, so that you would know concerning the exacta of all exacta, tax gatherers, thieves of the people, that he would write it. Uh, he said in verse 13, And he said unto them, It is written, there's your clue, beloved, all you have to know, that that is written. My house shall be called the house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. And I tell you this, when that city was taken over by a people that do not even allow Christ to be taught, that have stolen the wealth of the world in a peaceable way, then rightfully you can see and understand why Christ made these moves. Why he physically threw them out. Because it shall happen again. It shall happen again. But Jesus mentioned to you a scripture. He said, it is written. He said, you go back and read it, if you will, where it is written. You may learn something, you see. So let us turn, if we may, to Isaiah chapter 56 and see what Christ would have us uh, uh, retain from this or learn or gain or, or reap from this. Isaiah 56. Let's pick it up in verse 6. This speaks of that time coming. Also the sons of a stranger, he's talking about gathering them back into Jerusalem. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve um, him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. That means the rest day. What is that day now? Christ's day. He is your Sabbath. He is your rest. You either have the true Christ or you have the Antichrist from polluting it and taking hold of my covenant. In other words, stealing my covenant, claiming, uh, but not, not being. Verse 7, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful, in my house of prayer. In other words, at that time that he brings every stranger in that believes upon him and makes that a house of prayer is obviously the second advent, for this has not come to pass. Let us continue. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. If you want to know when physically that is fulfilled, read the 21st chapter of Revelation where the kings and queens of the Ephemus people Come to Jerusalem to pay respect to the living God, for he shall dwell there at that time. We see that this is future. Now listen to the warning. This is why Jesus wanted you to come here. Verse 8, The Lord God, which gathereth the outcast of Israel, saith, Yet shall I gather others to him, because those that are gathered, because those that are... Let's, let me begin again. The Lord God, which gathered the outcast of Israel, saith, Yet will I gather others to him, beside those that are gathered unto him. In other words, anyone that would believe. Now listen to the warning. And that all the ye beasts of the field come to devour. Yea, all ye beasts of the forest in the forest. This is you Kenites that use the living creatures. You stand by those that you have used. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant to... They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping or dreaming, lying down and loving to slumber. They're not giving any warning, beloved. This entire world has been robbed and taken advantage of in this past year. And there is not from one pulpit, hardly you might say, throughout the land, any one placing the blame where it should be on the money changer that Jesus drove out of the temple with his own hands and power. They're asleep. Uh, they don't understand what's happening in this world. And I tell you, it is time for the sons and daughters to prophesy in the way that he would have you to plant the seeds of truth, for he is returning soon. Verse 11, Yea, they are greedy dogs, uh, which can never have enough. Uh, and they are shepherds, uh, that cannot understand. All they have time for is in their greed is to say, send money, 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 money. They spend over half their time begging for money from the people rather than studying or teaching 
the Word of God. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain, for his quarter, from his quarter, rather, um, from every source they look and reap and steal and rob, even they themselves, the watchmen, as the money changers take the rest. Come, you say, come, you say they, I will fetch wine. And we will fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow shall be as this day and much more abundant. What it's saying is, is don't worry about a thing. You come on, everything is all right, and tomorrow is going to be a lot better. It is for this reason that the Antichrist comes in peaceably in English, but in the Hebrew tongue, prosperously. It shall be better every day if you worship mammon. If the way of the world, no, there won't be a crash. Everything is well under control. There are untold millions and billions of paid slaves in this world today, and they don't even know they are slaves, because the money changer has taken over the world. He uses prime time on television to gently persuade. After it's why were not the people warned as it was happening? After the barn door is left open and the mule is gone, it's too late to, to do any good other than to condition them mentally for what's about to happen. What an exciting time to live, beloved. Yes, you rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for this is our hour of glory to see he returning soon in his glory. This time, not humbly, not saying, if you will, but returning on a steed saying, you shall, as Lord of Lords and king of kings. If we may, let's, re, let's, let's, I'll tell you what. He said something else, taken over by, made it by a den of thieves. Let's turn on forward just a little bit. Jeremiah, next, next prophet forward. Jeremiah chapter 7. Let's cover just a little more of this, if we may. Jeremiah chapter 7. I'm going to begin reading at verse 1. This is what Jesus was talking about also, and he would have you absorbed concerning the moment. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Who is this word from? It is written. It is from Yahweh, the living God. Stand in the gate of the Lord's house, that's the temple, and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, or in the land of Judea, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. All you that come here seeking God in this city of Judea, Jerusalem, to the temple. Three. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. I'll make this a fit place for you if you'll just change your way. Four, trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. Let me tell you something. I have one question as they cry temple in Jerusalem today. I have one question for you, for Jesus also stated... Uh, in the book of John, second chapter, when he threw the money changers out, uh, they asked him for a sign, and he said, you tear the temple down and I'll rebuild it in three days. So I ask you, what is the temple of God now? It is the body of Christ. Don't you look at Jerusalem where Christ is not allowed and say the temple of God, the temple of God, the temple of God. Don't you say God's chosen people, God's chosen people, God's chosen people when they don't allow Christ to be taught in the streets thereof. As a matter of fact, he was crucified there. Wake up! The Kenites in the Hebrew tongue simply means the sons of Cain. Jesus gave a great message as he wrote in, Do not listen to the lying prophets uh, of the last days. The temple of God is Yahshua, Jesus Christ, and his body and his many-membered body. Verse 5, For if ye thoroughly... Amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods, this is the false Christ, the Antichrist, to your hurt. You see, but what did they do in that place, beloved? What happened in Jerusalem? What innocent blood was shed? What blood innocent of all innocency? Jesus Christ was crucified uh, in that city. They shed that blood. Uh, verse 7, Then will I cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Yes, that time shall come, but that was broken when the innocent blood was shed. 
This is what Christ now wanted you to come here for. Verse 8, Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Uh, you don't even know what the temple is. Will you steal, murder, and commit adultery, swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal? Are you going to be one of the 7,000 that will not bow a knee to Baal, or are you going to bow to him in that place uh, and walk after other gods uh, whom you know not? Uh, you better know who the true God is, beloved. Ten, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and shall we all and shall, we are delivered and say we are delivered to do all these abominations? It's all right for us to do this because these are God's chosen people. They don't have to worship Christ; they can worship whoever they want to. My Bible says, if you don't have Jesus, you don't have God. Epistles of John. Verse 11. In this house, which is called by my name, I'm sorry, is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? This is the words of Jesus as he answered, remember, in Matthew. Behold, even I have seen it, um, have, saith the Lord. Your father is not blind as to what is happening in this world. He sees it today, just before the second advent, the same as he saw it in the first. Remember in Matthew chapter 23 where Jesus said, the seed of Moses has been taken over by the scribes and the Pharisees. How much plainer could he have placed it? Moses is the law. What he's saying is the Kenite has, and the scribes, those that do your writing, have taken over Moses' law. They placed their own there. It's called rabbinical law, not God's law. And the church is flow to it. It is an abomination before God to deny the Christ and follow a people that spit upon the ground when his true name is mentioned. The world has been robbed by the money changers and they know not how nor who they are for they are blind and they sleep. Let's return, if we may, to back to the words of Jesus in the 21st chapter of Matthew. I tell you, this world needs him like never before. Only he can pull us from this depth and pit that the money changers have placed us in financially worldwide. Let's begin reading with verse 14 in that 21st chapter where we left off. Let's continue the words of Jesus uh, on that day that he drove the money changers from the temple. Verse 14. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Yes, you see, the Pharisees couldn't do this. It bothered them that he had the miracles of God in his hand. Verse 15. And when the chief priest and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children... Mark it in your mind, the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna, save us now to the son of David. They were sore displeased. You, Verse 15, And when the chief priest and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children, mark it in your mind, the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna, save us now to the son of David. They were sore displeased. You bet they were displeased. Someone coming in and working for free and performing miracles like this was about to, and driving out their ways to make a profit right in God's temple was about to upset their little playhouse. Uh, and I tell you, there is a many a work that claims to be a work of God that's going to have its coffers cleaned in the very near future. They can't stand the true spirit and the working of it because it shows them up. They don't possess it. Uh, they don't have it, uh, that is to say, the Holy Spirit uh, upon as blessings and work upon their ways. Uh, 16. And he said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? Jesus said to them, you, you hear what these children that are weeping in the temple are saying? And Jesus said, I'm sorry, these, these uh, Pharisees in their upset said, Do you understand that these children are calling you the son of David? And Jesus said unto them, Yea. Uh, have you never read? Again, saying it is written, beloved. He's telling you, you've got to go to the Word. Have you never read out of the mouth of babes 
and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. But do you know what the scripture that he's quoting goes ahead and continues? That thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Those words that were spoken from those mouths of those children crying in that temple that day shouting Hosanna are well recorded in the 8th Psalm. We must turn there. We must take time to go to the 8th Psalm and read that word. Jesus would have you know what is written concerning those babes and that voice that was crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Psalm 8, verse 1, and I will begin to read, O Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who hast set thy glory above the heavens. I must call your attention to the name of this psalm, the chief musician upon Gittas, which means the wine press. The wine press always meaning Christ, okay? Uh, verse 2. This is what Jesus would have you come here for. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained. In other words, you've chosen those children, preordained, predestined strength because of thine enemies. That's the money changers. That thou mightest still. That means to quiet, to destroy the enemy and the avenger. That's what Jesus wanted you to know about that statement. He has chosen you that he may use you, the mouth of babes, uh, that he may speak the truth, uh, that will avenge them, that will steal the money changer and his way, not according to your plan, but ordained by him before the foundations of this world to his plan, his way, as it is written. Let us continue. What is man? What, what can a little man do? Thou art... Uh, that thou art mindful of man. God, what do you worry about some little old puny man for? And the son of man, that thou visitest him. Lord, how is it that you can even care for us? Five, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, the Elohim, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. God, you have actually placed him over all the animal kingdom of this world. You allow him to be inventive and use his, his uh, ingenuity to develop and to perform and 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 God you bless him. All right. Verse six, thou madest him, this is Adam, to have dominion over the works of thy hands, that thou hast put all things under his feet. Beloved, God made the Adamic people. That's the, uh, Adam in the Hebrew tongue means ruddy complected. To have dominion. And they've allowed themselves to be robbed, cheated. They have been stolen until they, their wealth has been stolen until there is nothing left other than blank paper. There are only three banks in this nation. I'm talking about concerns, that is, uh, groupings. That if you subtract the bad debt that we have mentioned prior, that are not in the red. Think about it. The wealthiest nation in the world only has three banking systems that if you subtract away from their net worth the debts or the loans they have made to small nations that will never be repaid, there are only three that are in the black. All the rest are in the red. It's gone. It's gone, but fear not. Do not place your value upon money. It's not important. Not if you have followed the way of God. Now, certainly, you're supposed to sustain yourself. You're supposed to use wisdom. You must live in this world. But don't yet do not worry nor fear about it. But he gave man the ability to control far better than we have in the past. Seven, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, and the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. God, let man control all that. Nine, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. You'd better remember that, beloved. You'd better know it. There's only one stable force. For it is his words that are written, and it shall happen exactly on that wise. In closing, we're going to the book of Luke. 
I want to read about four or five verses there in Luke chapter 19 for you concerning the money changers. This is another gospel on the same entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, 19, chapter 19 in Luke. Jesus was making this entry, but he was weeping. I would imagine the reason Jesus was weeping is he could see your people today and how um, how they are taken in by the ways of the world, how they are taken in by the very people, the Kenites. Uh, and let, let's begin reading, if we may, in 41. And, and to fix your minds, we're still making the same entry. Uh, Luke 19, verse 41. And when he was come near, he beheld the city, and he wept over it. He looked down on Jerusalem, no doubt, from the Mount of Olives, uh, or whichever arise there that he was on, I assume it was, he began to weep. He could see his people and how they would be taken advantage of. His words were these, 42, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. You see, Yahushalem in the Hebrew tongue means the city of peace or the peaceful habitation. But now they are hid from thine eyes. In other words, Jesus was saying, I can see, I know, but you cannot see. And I weep for what I'm going to see in the end times. 43, For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee, encompass thee round, and keep thee in on every side. Beloved, that happened in 1948. Jesus was expelled from Jerusalem. It is not legal to even teach him in the streets of that city to someone that lives there. It is a law on the Israeli books. That would shock many Christians to know that, but most Christians sleep. The sleep uh, of the unknown. 44. And shall lay thee even with the ground, or what it really means is it's going to cause you to be laid even with the ground, and thy children within thee, every living soul that is inside of your gates at that time, and they shall not leave, leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. You didn't know my second coming, is what he's saying. You don't know when I'm going to visit you the second time. This time he was riding in lowly and humble. But he was weeping because he knew what he must do to this city when he returned again. Make a mental note, Matthew 25. Jesus, look at the stones in this city, Jerusalem. He says, I tell you, in the last day there won't be one stone left atop another. Do you know what that means? Sand, beloved. He's going to utterly and completely destroy the money changers' capital. He's not just going to drive them out gently with a cat of nine tails this time. He's going to flatten it up. Destroy it. Uh, not one stone on another. Not one brick. Uh, the wailing wall will be, the wailing will be all over. It will be flat. Uh, and Jesus will not be weeping that day. Nor will we. It will be a day of rejoicing. For truly, that will be Hosanna. Save now. For the Savior shall return to this earth. Never. Never to leave again. Not that he has departed, but we have, the, we have the comforter, I understand. But never to leave this earth again. Verse 45, And he went into the temple, and he began to cast out them that sold therein, and them that brought. In other words, he got rid of the money changer first. Beloved, if you don't understand what I'm saying, the wound has happened to the hidden dynasty of the economy. You heard it live in prime time this past week. The wound, I didn't say the deadly wound has happened and you better get your parachute now, okay? Don't panic on me. I simply said that the economy, that particular hidden dynasty received its wound. It was announced publicly. Verse 46, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. Uh, beloved, look at Jerusalem today and answer that question. 
Oh, I can weep when I think of it myself, that beautiful city, and how it has misled or caused to mislead because of a geographical location and a people that has taken hold of his covenant and said it belo- and say it belongs to us. That's not what the Word states. That's not what Jesus taught. He called them money changers and he drove them out. 30, 47. And he taught daily in the temple. But the chief priest and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him. Why? This man of peace, why did they always want to destroy him? Because he hurt their money changing, their usury. Verse 48. And could not find what they might do, for all the people were very attentive to hear him. Yes, people want to hear the truth, beloved. The hour of darkness is upon us. That's what Jesus said when he was delivered. But it shall soon end, and trusting it has ended for you already, that you are a child of light, that you have fallen into that true Sabbath, which is Yahshua, the Lord, the Jesus, the Christ. His teachings, as they are written, that prove everything that is happening today whereby you can be on guard. Learn the truth, uh, and the truth will set you free. Be prepared, watchmen. Be prepared. I feel that that second advent is very soon due to the happenings of this month. Watch May closely. Pray for knowledge and wisdom. Let us go to his throne. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the opportunity, and indeed it is an opportunity, Father, together to study thy word. Father, let the true teachings of Jesus Christ, Father, fill our minds and our hearts and our way and become our way, Father, in these final hours. Use these thy children, we pray, in the precious name of Yahshua, Jesus the Christ. Amen.